I'm Donald Enos, and this is Devil's Advocate. Quite a sec, guys. When I'm ready, right? Yeah. Okay. Let me give you a little inside information about God. God likes to watch. He's a prankster. Think about it. He gives man instincts. He gives you this extraordinary gift, and then what does he do? I swear, for his own amusement, his own private cosmic gag reel, he sets the rules in opposition. It's the goof of all time. Look, but don't touch. Touch, but don't taste. Taste, don't swallow. <laughs> and while you're jumping from one foot to the next, what is he doing? He's laughing his sick fucking ass off. He's a tight ass. He's a sadist. He's an absentee landlord. Worship that never. And what was that you were saying earlier? Better to reign in hell than serve in heaven. Is that it? Why not? I've been down here on the ground with my nose in it since the whole thing began. I've nurtured every sensation that man has been inspired to have. I cared about what he wanted, and I never judged him for it. Why? Because I never rejected him. In spite of all his imperfections, I'm a fan of man. I'm a humanist. Maybe the last humanist. Who in their right mind, Kevin, could possibly deny the 20th century was entirely mine? All of it, Kevin. All of it. Mine. It's my time now. I'm peeking. Hi, this is Sophia Warren uh, reading from us. Hi, my name is Joseph Sanchez. I did Good Will Hunting, Ben Affleck's best part of my day scene. You're my best friend, so don't take this the wrong way, but in 20 years, if you're still living here, coming over to my house to watch the Patriots games, still working construction, I'll fucking kill you. 
That's not a threat. That's a fact. They'll fucking kill you. What do you mean? Look, you've got something none of us have. Why does everyone talk about what I owe myself and... No, no, no. Fuck you. You don't owe it to yourself. You owe it to me. Because tomorrow I'm going to wake up and I'll be 50. I'll still be doing this shit. That's all right. That's fine. But you're sitting on a winning lottery ticket. Just too much of a pussy to cash it in. That's bullshit. Because I'd do fucking anything to have what you got. So would any of these fucking guys. It'd be an insult to us if you're still here in 20 years. Hanging around here is a fucking waste of your time. You don't know that. I don't. I don't know that. Let me tell you something I do know. Every day I come to your house and I pick you up. We go out, have a few drinks, a few laughs, and it's great. But you know what the best part of my day is? It's for about 10 seconds when I pull up to your curb, it's when I get to your door. Because I think maybe one day I'll get up there and I'll knock, but you won't be there. No goodbye, no see you later, no nothing. Just left. See, I don't know much, but I know that. Lynn Foley, Mrs. Potts, Beauty and the Beast. Mrs. Potts here. I thought you might like a nice spot of tea. All right, Chip, now that'll do. Slowly now, don't spill. Chip, that was a very brave thing you did, my dear. Cheer up, child. It'll work out all right in the end. You'll see. <laughs> Listen to me jabbering on when there's a dinner to be put on the table. Chip. Oh, my goodness. Illustrators, they gave me no arms. How am I supposed to knock on the door? Oh, and then when I go to the pub at the end of the week with the girls, how am I supposed to bend an elbow? Hmm. And the sun, I got a little sun on my spout this weekend. Is it red, gentlemen? Are we done? Thank you. I'm Giovanni Silva, and I'm doing the Tom Cruise scene from Tropic Thunder. Oh, Flaming Dragon. First... Take a big step back and literally FUCK YOUR OWN FACE! Now, I don't know what type of pan-Pacific bullshit power play you're trying to pull here, but Asia Jack's my territory. So whatever you're thinking, you better fucking think again. Otherwise, I'm gonna have to come down there and I will rain an ungodly fucking firestorm upon you. You're gonna have to call the fucking United Nations to get a fucking binding resolution to keep me from fucking destroying you. I'm talking scorched earth, motherfucker! I will massacre you! I will fuck you up! Hi, my name is Geraldine, and I'm going to performance as seen from um, the Mean Girls. Let me tell you something about Yang's Ian. We were best friends in middle school. I know, right? It's so embarrassing. I don't even... whatever. In 8th grade, I started going out with my first boyfriend, Kyle, who was totally gorgeous, but then he has to move to Indiana, and she was like, really jealous of him, like, if I would blow her up to hang out with him, and she was like, why you didn't call me back, and I was like, why are you so obsessed with me, and then, for my birthday party, which was all girls' pool party, she was like, I was like, Yanis, I can't invite you because I think you're a lesbian. And I mean, I couldn't have a lesbian at my pool party. There are gonna be girls in their swimsuits everywhere. I mean, right? Just a lesbian. And then her mom called my mom and started yelling at her. It was so retarded. And then she dropped off the school because nobody would, would talk to her. And then she came back in high school uh, with and her hair was all cut off, and she was totally weird, and now I guess she's a crack. Jason Hernandez, Other People's Money. This company is dead. I didn't kill it. 
Don't blame me. It was dead when I got here. It's too late for prayers. For even if the prayers were answered and a miracle occurred, and the end did this and the dollar did that, and the infrastructure did the other thing, we would still be dead. You know why? Fiber optics, new technologies, obsolescence. We're dead all right, we're just not broke. And you know, the surest way to go broke, keep getting an increasing share of a shrinking market. Down the tubes, slow but sure. Oh, I'm Dion Ellis, and I'm doing a scene from American Gangster. See, brand names, brand names, they mean something. Understand? Blue Magic, that's a brand name. Like Pepsi, that's a brand name. I stand behind it. I guarantee it. And they know that. Even if they don't know me anymore, then they know the, the chairman of General Mills. What I'm saying is, when you chop my dope down one, two, three, four, five percent, then you start calling it blue magic, that is trademark infringement. You understand what I'm saying? My name is Jordy B. Dallas, and I'm doing the teaser of the pilot of uh, Breaking Bad. <sighs> my name is Walter Hartel White. I live in Del Negro, Royal Lane, Albuquerque, New Mexico. 87104. To all law enforcement entities, this is not an admission of guilt. I'm speaking to my family now. Skyler, you are the love of my life. I hope you know that. Walter Jr., you're my big man. There's going to be things that you'll find out about me. These things, no matter how they look, no matter how they seem, all I want you to know is I only had you in my heart. Goodbye. Oh, well, I'll tell you, I remember this one time I was in a banshee at night under combat conditions, so there was no running lights on the carrier. It was the Shangri-La, and we were in the Sea of Japan. My radar jammed, and my homing signal was gone because somebody in Japan was actually using the same frequency. So I'm looking at this big black ocean, so I just turn on my map light, and suddenly, zap. Everything shorts out. My instruments are gone. My lights are gone. I don't even know what altitude I'm at. And I know I'm running out of fuel, so I'm thinking about... about... ditching into the ocean. And I look down there, down there in the darkness, and... I see this... green trail. This big, long carpet laid out right beneath me. You know, it's... it's the algae, right? It's that uh, phosphorescent stuff that gets churned up in the wake of the ship. And it was, it was leading me home. So, if my lights hadn't have shorted out, there's no way I would have been able to see it. So you never know what, uh, what events might transpire to, to get you home. I'm Annalisa Taylor, and I'm doing the, that 70s show, Kelso's Best Story. Red, hey! You're wondering what I'm doing with your stuff. Well, uh, you see, I needed to borrow your saw. Because I need to chop down a tree. Because there's, a, there's something in that tree. An animal, a rabbit. And I want to return that rabbit to the wild so it can lay its eggs.
Hello, my name is Alejandro S. Garcia, and I'm going to be performing the insulting Frenchman from Monty Python and the Holy Grail. I don't want to talk to you no more, you empty-headed food trough wiper. I fart in your general direction. Your mother was a hamster, and your father smelt of elderberries. My name is Dominic Hernandez, and I'm doing a scene from The Breakfast Club. Stupid, worthless, no good, goddamn freeloading son of a bitch, retarded, big mouth, know it all, asshole, jerk. You forgot ugly, lazy, and disrespectful. Shut up, bitch! Go fix me a turkey pot pie. What about you, dad? Fuck you. No, dad. What about you? Fuck you. No, dad. What about you? Fuck you! I know what it's like to lose, to feel so desperately that you're right, yet to fail nonetheless. It's frightening. It turns the legs to jelly. But I ask you, to what end? Dread it, run from it. Destiny arrives all the same. And now it's here. Or should I say, I am. All right. I'm Grady Fiorio, and I'm doing Say What Again from Pulp Fiction. Oh, I'm sorry, did I break your concentration? Please, you were, uh, continue. You were saying something about best intentions. Oh, you were finished. Well, allow me to retort. What does Marcellus Wallace look like? What country are you from? What? Do they speak English and what? What ain't no country I ever heard of? What does Marcellus Wallace look like? Say what again? Say what again? Say it again. I double dare you motherfucker. Say what one more goddamn time. Does he look like a bitch? What? Does he look like a bitch. Then why you try and fuck him like a bitch, Brett? Yes, you did, Brett. Yes, you did. You tried to fuck him. And Marcellus Wallace don't like to be fucked by anybody except Mrs. Wallace. The smell. Do you smell that? Napalm, son. Nothing in the world smells anything like that. I love the smell of napalm in the morning. You know, this one time we bombed this whole hill, 12 hours. When it was done, I walked up. We didn't, we didn't find one body, not one stinking dink body. The smell, you know, the gasoline smell, the whole hill. It smelled like victory. Oh, hi, my name is Frank Talavera. I will be uh, performing the last courtroom scene from Mrs. Doubtfire. Your Honor, in the past two months, I have secured a residence. I have refurbished that residence, made it an environment fit for children. Those are your words. I have also gotten a job as a shipping clerk. So, uh, I do believe I've met your requirements. A little ahead of schedule, even. As for my behavior, well, I can only plead insanity. Because from the moment I saw my children, I was crazy about them. As I held each of them, I, I was hooked. I'm addicted to my children, and I love them with all my heart. The idea that someone will 
is telling me that I can't be with them, that I can't see them every day. It's like someone telling me that I can't have air. I can't live without air, and I can't live without my children. Listen, I would do anything to be with my children. You know that I need that. We, <laughs> we have a history. They need me as much as I need them. So please, don't take my children away from me. My name is Isaiah Hobbs, and I'm doing a scene from 24, season one. Lauren, I have killed two people since midnight. I have not slept over 24 hours. So maybe, maybe you should be a little more afraid of me than you are right now. All right, this is Joshua Polanco. This is Syndrome's monologue. It's finally ready. You know, I had to go to quite a few soups to get ready to fight you, but you are worth it. After I tried the last one, I made some major modifications. Sure, it was difficult, but after all, I'm your biggest fan. My name's not Buddy, and it's not a credit boy neither. That ship has sailed. I only wanted to help you. I only wanted to help. And what'd you say to me? You know, that taught me a valuable lesson. Then I can't count on anybody, especially your heroes. See, now you see, you see, respect me now because I'm a threat. That's how it works. How do you think I got so rich? I made invented weapons and now I have a weapon that only I can defeat and I, ha <laughs> ha, you sly dog, you caught me monologuing. I'm Christian Torres and this is Clark Grizzard's rant from vacation. I think you're all fucked in the head. We're 10 hours in the fucking fun park and you want to bail out. Well, I'll tell you something, this is no longer a vacation. It's a quest. It's a quest for fun. I'm gonna have fun and you're gonna have fun. We're all gonna have so much fucking fun we need plastic surgery to move our goddamn smires. You'll be whispering zippity doodah out of your assholes. <laughs> I gotta be crazy, I'm on a pilgrimage to see a moose. Praise Marty Moose. Holy shit! This guy people are sending us a message that they can take whatever they want and nobody can stop them. Well, we will send them a message. You ride as fast as the wind can carry you. You tell the other clans to come. You tell them, Turuk Makdo calls to them. And you fly now, with me, my brothers, sisters. And we will show the sky people that they cannot take whatever they want. And that this, this is our land. I'm Luis Santos, and I'm going to do Freedom Writers uh, in class. I'm home. The summer, the summer was the worst summer in my short 14 years of life. It all started with a phone call. My mother was crying and begging, asking for more time. As she was gasping for, the, for her last breath of air, she held me as tight as she could and cried. Her tears hit my shirt like bullets and told me we were being evicted. She kept apologizing to me that I have no home I should have asked something less expensive at Christmas. On the morning of the eviction, a hard knock on the door woke me up. A sheriff was there to do his job. I looked in the sky waiting for something to happen. My mother has no family to lean on. No money coming in. Why bother going to school and getting good grades if I'm homeless? The bus stops in front of the school. I feel like throwing up. I'm wearing clothes from last year. Some old shoes and no new haircut. 
I kept thinking I get laughed at. Instead, I'm being graded by a couple of friends from my English class last year, and it hurts me. Mrs. Guru, my English class teacher from last year, is the only person that made me think of hope. Talking with friends about last year English and our trips, it began to feel better. I received my schedule and the first teacher I my first teacher is Mrs. Gruel, room two three. I walked into the room and I feel as though all the problems in life are not as important anymore. I am home.